Hi YouTube, it's Debbie. Um, checking in for my last video when I was contemplating whether or not to have a surgery and what I've decided to do is go on a low calorie diet. I'm talking a thousand calories. I'm basically going to follow bariatric post-op diet and exercise routine. Try to, I mean, I mean, aside from the small, tiny, tiny portions, I'm going to, um, I'm going to do my protein shakes, and I'm going to have one sensible, small little dinner with some chicken, green beans, something, and um, drink my water, exercise, and see how it goes. I figure I have two weeks until I'm supposed to go to the doctor's office to pick up my two weeks supply of um, liquid protein drink for my pre op diet. Um, if I'm successful for these two weeks, I'm going to postpone surgery and see how I can continue with myself. Um, yes, I've dieted before for sure and failed. The most I've lost at one time is 90 pounds and that got me down to um, 220 pounds, so I had, you know, maybe 60 pounds to go or so to reach goal. Um, I don't know, I, for me this time, it's a little different knowing that I'm this close to actually having surgery, and I'm not, um, trying to discourage anybody from having surgery. This is all about myself and my own journey. I'm using this video vlogging thing to, um, to help myself understand myself better. You know, I'll have these videos to look back on and see where I was at a month ago mentally. Right now, I feel good. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm getting ready to go to Hawaii to go for a walk. Um, I'm going to try this. Knowing that surgery is just around the corner, it's almost more of a motivating factor for me to get this weight off and do it on my own. Uh, reading again about risks and possible complications, even years post-op, has made me question whether or not this surgery is going to help me in the long run. Because of the fact that I am a food addict, I've been diagnosed as that. Um, so having the surgery isn't going to take care of this up here. And thinking about that more and more made me realize you know, I could possibly, you know, lose all this weight and then start gaining it back again. And maybe even have some kind of complications set in. And I sure don't want to be setting a year from now or a year and a half from, or two years, three years from now, fat again along with complications because I rerouted my digestive system. I would just... I'd probably go off the deep end then, honestly, <laughs> to feel like I have done the last resort and failed. I, I just, I, I just can't, can't do it right now. I, anyway, I'm, I'm hopeful. I am going to try my best at this. The thing that sucks the most is that I'm going to experience hunger. And that is something you don't have after surgery with low calories. I mean, you guys are probably doing 800 calories or less a day. I don't know about you post stoppers how many calories you might consume a day. But, um, I mean, and that's eating nutritious food, not junk. <laughs> so, that's going to suck. I, I don't like feeling my hunger. And it, it takes probably three or four days for that to subside for me, you know, and, but the plus side is that I'll start feeling better physically in one to two days, if, usually after even the first day of cutting out high fatty foods and especially sugars. My body does not <laughs> take well to sugar at all. And it's my, that's my top addiction is sugar. And it makes me extremely achy, way more achy than I am normally just at this weight. So I, I do start feeling better right away. 
and mentally I start feeling better just from the fact that, wow, I did it. I made it through a day. I made it through two days. And I don't know if that's feeling, you know, because I have such a, an addiction that when I make it through, it seems like a huge accomplishment for me if I make it through a day with eating right. <laughs> so I see a therapist every week, and I'm going to continue, obviously, to do that. Unfortunately, around here, the only thing available for food addicted kind of problems, food addictions, is like OA, and I've tried those here in my area, and to be honest with you, I, I don't, the ones I've gone to, they've always um, had people that are a lot older than I am, that oftentimes are retired, and I'm not saying that, you know, food addiction is food addiction, right, no matter what your age. The difference is just that my goals and my um, my current lifestyle and what I want for myself is different than theirs. I mean, they're retired. Their kids are grown. I, I can't relate to them on a personal level along with food addiction. And I it's unfortunate, but for some reason in this area, there just aren't many people my age that participate in these kind of groups. And then, um, of course, any kind of eating disorder, it's usually bulimia or anorexia, but um, addiction is addiction, whether it's food, alcohol, or drugs. I get that. It's a, it's an addictive disease. It's, But anyway, I'm sidetracking. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the Y. I'm going to check in probably every day for myself just to do a quick... Um, vlog about how I'm feeling for the day, how did I make it through the day before, just my mental um, thinking at the time, you know, to see if I <laughs> uh, am getting encouraged or discouraged, I guess. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. And I will check in um, again. Bye.